Hello? Hello. What was that? That was a yawn. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. We're back. And you cut your hair. Yep. Looks good. Fine. Short. It's always good when someone just identifies the most obvious thing. It looks it's good. It's short. Right. Anyway. Why made you cut your hair? I was just tired of having long hair. Oh, come on. What's the real answer? You'll never know. I will anyway. find out. Why'd you cut your hair? Yeah, I just, I always had it up. I never actually styled it. So it was nice to have, it just felt like it was like making my face look long and drawn out. And it felt good to cut it and feel like a little bit of uplifting, you know, not dragging me down. My hair was weighing me down. Ah. Literally. <laughs> Rapunzel. <laughs> you started calling me Rapunzel. That's why I cut my hair. Right. I forgot about that. I think it looks good. I like it. Thanks. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about coaching this, yeah. this week. And I think a couple podcasts ago, we sort of said, oh, we need to talk about that. Maybe that's another episode. Mm -hmm. And then I think we did that like two weeks in a row. Yeah, I think there was an episode where we were identifying the role of like a coach versus a consultant. Right. Which is a mentor. And right. then there was like a rabbit hole we could have gone down with coaching. And we're like, we'll talk about that on another episode. So here right. we are. It's so time. here we are with a reasonable certainty that we identified what we're gonna the other uh, the new rabbit hole yeah i don't think it makes sense to talk about the different roles though no i just meant that's where that came from yeah 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 yeah, yeah i'm just saying for for now for today we're, we're going to talk about um coaching why we got into coaching what coaching it kind of means mm -hmm. different approaches like yeah, and I a think more personal experience with the topic because, like, I think it is kind of like, what does it mean? Sure, and I think for a lot of people there, we try to provide people something they can use, and I think there's a lot of people saying they're coaches out there. I mean, including us. So, mm -hmm. I think giving people, arming them with some of our, at least our thought of like what makes a coach, so that it can help people also differentiate or distinguish if they're looking for a coach um you know what might be a good fit for them not just anybody that hangs a sign that says they're a coach that might not be as valuable what do you think the most important thing for a coach is um maybe well, I mean, not I mean, the yeah, most that's I th kind of i think from like working honestly with you and now kyla like i think if you had asked me that a few years ago, maybe it would be different. But I think for sure your, my experience of your work and your coaching and then seeing it, you know, not via you being my husband, but through having a coach. Um, yeah, it's really that like, not giving you the answers, but providing you like that balance of helping the client or provide like find the answers guiding them but not giving them so you know I think yeah I guess I would say that's kind of the number one without that then what's the rest right consultancy really sure. just kind of what it would be yeah um yeah I'd agree with that I think that that's super important and, and you know I think the my experiences with coaches have ranged anywhere from on the field mm -hmm. you know soccer had a ton and basketball had a, a bunch as well but you know the, the real ones were um on the soccer field on the sidelines and then obviously in the military that no one called themselves a coach right you know really in the military um you know, everyone, well, I guess what's funny, like the cadre, but that comes with an entire different yeah, set yeah. of things. But, you know, you're, you're 100, and one of the amazing things about it is that you're, you are around coaches and people are mm -hmm. doing some amazing coaching. Um, 
without even knowing it. Uh, and, and nine times out of 10, they were the, the best leaders as well. Cause coaching is a form of, mm-hmm. of leadership. You know, it's, I, I view them really as synonyms and it's the same to your point. It's the same thing that if you just tell somebody what to do, like they're going to forget it nine times out of 10. So you're just yeah. hoping that it's luck that they are able to mm-hmm. repeat what they did and they definitely can't tell anybody else. So like it kind of like it kind of stops, the chain stops there. Yeah, I guess like it helps to think of it like an example. I think nutrition is like a great example. There's a lot of in the world of nutrition, there's a lot of nutrition coaches. It doesn't necessarily mean the person's going to forget what they're told, but if it's just about eat this, eat this much of that, here are your numbers, that is not a coaching role because there's nothing, it's a one-way conversation. Yeah. It's, I'm going to tell you what to do, and then you're going to either do it or not do it, and that's it. It's very black and white, and there's no interaction, there's no... So I, I do kind of, from that side, some of those categories of coaches, um, and I guess you could say the same for like a CrossFit coach. If I just tell you, do this, do that, and there's no, okay, how does that feel? Or what do you think? Or what could you do differently? It's just, again, a one-way street. That person's either going to take it or leave it. It might work, it might not work, but that's not that's not really an interactive relationship that's affecting the individual. No. And I think that at the core and you know, everybody has their own interpretation of coaching and a lot of people probably have the same interpretation. So I'm not saying any of this is necessarily original. Um, but like the involvement is such a huge piece. Right. And if you are not involving as a coach, if you're not involving your client, in the discovery process for whatever the solution is mm-hmm. or the idea or the creativity or whatever, you are not coaching them. Mm-hmm. And as a client, if you are not involved in mm-hmm. coming up with, like you also have a responsibility yeah. as well. Like yeah. this isn't just like, Hey, blame, point the finger and blame the coach. Like as a client, like if you don't do anything, then right. Like at what point do you limited. think the coach is going to live your life? Right. Cause they're, cause they're not, he or she right. is not going to. And if you think that that's the case and you know, So like looking at involvement as a litmus for coaches in your life and and they could be informal or formal. But don't you think that people, I think what's challenging about that is if that's what we think is, if that's what we think is where there's value in coaching involvement from both sides, Mm -hmm. but it's so much easier to just get told what to do. Yeah. So I think that's where it's not as popular. So if like, myself and another coach are pitching somebody for like they want to improve their fitness they want to improve their nutrition they want to lose a significant amount of weight they want to be healthy and my process looks like a year and they're gonna have to ask themselves some questions and I'm not gonna give them all the answers or the other person's gonna say I'm gonna give you the diet all you gotta do is follow it that looks a lot more attractive that looks easier they don't have to do as much work so I think and there that's lies. where it's, and then the work does, then the success isn't lasting. They're not actually, whatever that thing is they're looking for, they're chasing the wrong, they're chasing the object. They're not, they're not actually discovering what they're looking for. But initially it sounds great. And it's like, let's get it done. Let's get it done quick. That kind of promising of results and like, I'll give you the answers is, is attractive, is, is kind of a deceptive thing. It's, it's very attractive and. Right, and therein lies the entire issue with human or human interaction services, be that fitness, nutrition, mindset, leadership, lifestyle, parenting, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, therein lies the entire issue because what's attractive, you know, I forget where I heard this or from whom, but like, people want things wall in Walmart at Walmart prices, mm-hmm. McDonald's fast and Costco abundance or something like right, that. Right. People want things fast, cheap and easy. It's it definitely not. I, I definitely butchered that. Yeah. But the point is, um, we want it now. We want it for cheap and we want it to be easy. Yeah. And it's like, that's fine. But what's if you're fine? ordering a fucking deck of cards that has no meaning in your life mm-hmm. or something like, you know what I mean? Like it's, but we're talking about something that is 
life changing. Right. Your nutrition. Here, we'll start with this. Your relationship with yourself. Yeah. Is life changing. That's it. And, you and if you want it. that, like at a discount. Yeah. Like what is well or easy? I mean, that's what's crazy though. Is you look at people what they'll spend on a car. I mean, we know people in our lives that will really treat the car, a nice car, like really well, maybe not even drive the car as much, like really take good care of the car. And they value like, okay, there's a price I paid this car. It was a nice car. It's a good car. It's an expensive car, but they're not going to pay for food. Maybe that because they're not going to put themselves at that value for them. They want fast, cheap and easy. But so it's not just like everything in people's lives are fast, cheap and easy. People will choose nice clothes, nice cars. These material things put them at a place that's like, well, that's a luxury item and I'll spend money on that. I don't want the cheapest car, Well, but for themselves, they won't. And it's like, what's that about? I think it's about material items say something about you. Mm -hmm. It mean there's a value structure there. People value whatever mm -hmm. outside of price tag, you know. Um, and often with materialism, people purchase things not because of what value it's going to provide them, but what it is going to project about them. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't have to like like yeah, it's, that kind, it's kind of, of gets, easy. I mean, I guess in some ways, even though it's not cheap, it's easy because all it takes. I am buying something. this pair of Lululemon shorts mm -hmm. and, and this Lululemon outfit or this Mercedes car or, you know, whatever, whatever, because the person that I want to project does this. And that mm -hmm. person is someone who is active minded is kind of a, at a certain socioeconomic Sure, you're class. creating an identity through yeah, these things. It's, yeah. and so All I think I'm saying that, is like people do that with material things, but they won't do that. And they're not as apt to do that with like, I am the kind of person that gets up and goes to the gym. What does that take to be that person? Yeah. So all I'm saying is fast, cheap, and easy. Often people want that as it relates to their fitness or their, or themselves or coaching, but it's, they won't, have that lowest standard for material things. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's where, uh, you know, that's where I think that in, in coaching, um, and being coached mm -hmm. too, is an incredibly, um, you just have stuff on your hand from the marker. It's an incredibly enlightening experience for, for yourself. Like, how do you take to being coached? Right. And there's plenty of people who didn't play team sports Me. or yes, you not a team sport athlete, but we're working on it. Um, no, but like have never had that, that component. So how would you then? Yeah. Like, of course you're going to struggle with maybe getting coaching or, you know, good coaching. Cause it's not easy to be coached, but anyway, um, yeah, that's a good point. So then I, I feel like when it comes to coaching or at least for the coaching that we do, mm -hmm. it is kind of tricky because it's not compartmentalized. Like it's very, we know enough to know that everything is pretty much related mm -hmm. and we do coaching at the gym, obviously. In the classes we do nutrition stuff we do one-on-one -on -one stuff and then we do between the ears coaching same thing kind of one-on-one -on -one involving physical mm -hmm. stuff not involving physical stuff all of the differences and it's a it's a challenge to kind of cast a a large net over ev like working with people and just calling it coaching yeah and so what are your thoughts on like the different categories sort of, or, or if, if, if you couldn't, dis if you couldn't say coaching, what would you say? Like, in other words, like an example would be like teaching versus guiding or, or what do you mean? I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess just, I guess instead of saying like, well, we coach people. 
using like a blanket term. Because because yeah, coaching, I mean, I, I think... guess each of those things there's a there's is I think it comes down to like. I guess when I look at coaching as an umbrella, and then when you start to look at in those categories. So, for example, the gym in a class. That coaching versus me coaching a one-on-one through the same kind of workout. The mm-hmm. difference there is obviously like working with one person. Mm-hmm. The involvement or the depth to which you're able to focus on that one person. So, what's that? I don't know. I don't know what so the name it sounds is. So, like, I feel like but... it's like coaching in a group class. Yeah, it's not as personal. Is, but I don't don't want to say it's just teaching because it's not. There is there is checking in with people, f- getting that conversation going, two way street communication, like what's happening, how are you feeling. So it's not like that's thrown away in a class. Right. But what I feel like is being said is where we where we throw one blanket answer over coaching, say mm-hmm. hey we coach. Yeah. It sort of becomes I think a bit of a cookie cutter type thing. Right. And at the heart of coaching, I believe, is flexibility and adaptability to whom you are coaching or how many you are coaching or the okay. context upon which you're coaching. And so I guess my reason for asking that question was to kind of highlight the point that like, yeah, as a coach, you have to be able to, to like, to change right, and to evolve and to adapt, really not necessarily evolve, but like adapt to what the needs are that for that engagement. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's one of the things where I think when we look at coaching or when we look at people that want coaching, right. considering like, okay, what is the environment? What is the situation? What is the context? What's the reason you're talking? Mm-hmm. And then looking, cause I think the thing is like, okay, great. Like I want coaching. Where do I look for a coach? Like, I think that's a really challenging thing. Obviously right, it we, depends on what they want coaching on. Of course. Yeah, I, I mean, in all of, I guess when you're talking, I'm thinking about like, we've had a number of people come to us who maybe want to become, who aren't part of our organization, who want our help to become better coaches in the CrossFit world. Yeah. And it hasn't gone real well. Most of them. Most of them. Most of them come. We look at where they're at. And I think because it's not a... I think sometimes like what people think they want to our point of like what coaching is and having to be adaptable, both as a coach and a client, like, I I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but just that there's a lot of people out there that want, think that it looks a certain way and it's, and then when it's like, oh, okay, well, it doesn't have to do with how many times you call that person's name we have to go deeper and like, it's going to take more time. And why, how do you adapt to this group versus that group? And people just don't want to take that time. That's, that's yeah. too much. That's, I don't right. just, just tell me how to like, come on, just, get out of it. Yeah. Just tell me how to like get the job. Yeah. And it's like, well, but, that's, that's not, that doesn't work that way. No, that reminds me of, yeah. Cause I guess what one of the things, and this is where like every coach and if you're, and if you, are listening and you want to become a coach or you are a coach and you're developing as a coach obviously like we're you know we're all in this together and we're not saying yeah. like, this is how you do it's it a process. um but like from from having oh i don't know 25 years of like really good coaching mm-hmm. and being in it for and it's the longest it's the most experience in anything i have mm-hmm. is with coaching being coached and coaching one of the things that you need to think about is like to what degree are you going to challenge and provide enlightenment not that you're going to bestow upon this person but Mm -hmm. you're going to facilitate your client to achieve some form of enlightening enlightenment and you know not in the buddhist sense but like oh now i see it because what people come to you with and say Mm -hmm. the first thing they want is usually so surface and it's paper thin. Mm. Very rarely do people come in and say, hey, I have an unhealthy relationship with myself because of blah, 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 blah. Right. Or like, I have yeah, familiar sure. issues. It's like, or, like oh, I want to lose five pounds. Yeah, it's like, hey, kind of here's what I'm sort of hiding behind. Mm-hmm. And so understanding that 
as a coach, or at least our, my, our approach is like, you are teaching somebody something about themselves. Right. To learn well, more about themselves. Yeah, you're providing an experience for that person to learn about themselves. Yeah, I get it, like teaching someone, but that sounds almost like I'm going to tell you. Yeah, you're that's providing not the, right the, use of the words. You're providing the opportunity for them to learn something about themselves. And I think it is a perspective issue. It's hard for you to, you know, you have your perspective that you've had your whole life. It, it can be, it's, it's helpful to have that outside perspective to provide some questions and some thoughts that maybe you wouldn't normally consider on your own and looking at it a different way. Cause you're, you haven't done yeah, it. Yeah. And it yours. might be, and this is, you know, one of the things that I've had experience with, with individual clients, not coaching CrossFit, but like, Hey, I want to pursue something in my life. Like the challenge is always in any, in like in these coach training programs and everything, they tell you like you, it cannot be your agenda. Sure. As the coach. As the coach. Yeah. And, 100% agree with that and you have to be independent and you have to be objective and that's some such part of the value mm -hmm. With the role of a coach. I mean, that's well, right if you look at a class someone doing a movement If you're trying to Get them like it can't be your agenda for what you want out of that person to To get to like they might have no one they don't might not have the same Goals at all or whatever. It's like you have to really work with where they're at with their body with what they're feeling like you can't impose on them your yeah your goals or your athletic goals or how your body feels like it's theirs yeah so one of the things that you know is important is to not also jump to the conclusion that you have their answer because mm -hmm. you don't and if it, I think it's impossible not to have an instinctual reaction, like especially as a newer coach, like, no, I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, this is what you, or just just do this. Like, just, you know, just don't, just don't go to Wendy's or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, like that's, it's not for you to answer, it's for, it's for them to. And potentially as a coach, you're going to question and raise awareness and enlightenment of the fact that why they came to you they actually don't want it. And it might seem to be very, um, it might like, seem to be counterproductive. Example? Yeah, when you I can. talk in theory, so it's a little harder. So there was this, that, um, that girl who wanted to go to the Naval Academy. Okay. Somebody reached out, heard I was a Green Beret, did training, did mindset stuff, blah, 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 coaching. So, you know, she's in high school, I said, sure, yeah, we can, first meet to talk. So what do you want to do? I want to, why are we, why are we talking right now? I want to go to the Naval Academy. Okay. Why is that important? Well, I want to, you know, serve and I want to uh, like, in, like struggling to kind of come up with an answer. And like, that's a pretty important question to know, like, why do you want to go to a military academy? Mm -hmm. And I would be, I would be lying if I said, okay, I don't, if I thought rather like, I'm not sure if she, like she's really ready for it or really wants it, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to rule her out because she might need somebody to just show her how to cultivate that okay. and how to develop it. Right. So, you know, I had some, some initial impressions as mm -hmm. obviously you do, but like their initial impressions, they're not final conclusions. Mm -hmm. So it was like, all right, if, uh, have you taken a PT test yet? And she said, no. And I said, okay, and you want to go to the Naval Academy and this, and you're willing, and you're willing to do whatever it takes, right? Kind of that stuff. She's like, yep. I'm like, okay, meet me at the gym tomorrow at four in the morning. And it was like, what? Like I thought, and it was like, if that's what you want, but you're telling me that you want to go to the Naval Academy. I'll meet you at the gym. If it's important to you, then we have to get a baseline. Do you understand? Do you agree that that's something mm -hmm. that you, yes, I do. Well then what's the problem? And, the, we and have, she, but she came and she showed up mm -hmm. and she came and I was like, there's no way, there's no way she's gonna, like, I did not think she was going to show up. I figured she was going to go home, tell her mom and her mom was going to say, that's insane. Mm -hmm. No, like 
call this idiot you know sure as shit 4 a.m at the gym like cool let's get to work and that was big so then was doing some one-on-one -on -one training and it took about a month for her to say i i don't i'm not actually not going to continue coaching with you because my goals have changed and i i what this has taught me is i don't really want to i don't want to do this like there's other people who really want to and i think there's elements of it that are attractive to me but i don't really fully understand it and right which was valuable which is super valuable mm -hmm. you know which is super valuable and like right and had you in the initial onset said like i don't think you want it the process of her coming to that conclusion she wouldn't have learned that's what the value was so and like what did she learn her about her. herself that she wants to be part of something bigger right. than herself she wants to work hard for something and she wants to be disciplined and dedicated and those are amazing things and those are things that a service academy can or are mm -hmm. like huge in service committee or military in general but the but the, that's not the only place mm -hmm. you know and so learning those things about yourself and like kind of who you are and who you are not as well is incredibly valuable so as a coach like that's where you have to provide that opportunity independent of your own previous pre, like sure. presumptions um, yeah that, that that ability to learn yeah. to learn more about yourself and it is not cheap and it is not quick and it is right. not easy and it takes a ton more work than the clients probably gonna know but mm -hmm. that's so, you know, it's come up recently with a couple conversations, some opportunities to do like the corporate thing. And so yesterday talking to a member about like, you know, he has had some people come in and talk and the Jocko Willing stuff came up and some of that approach or like people who, you know, I would say he probably calls himself a coach. Who? Jocko. Like a life coach. I mean, don't you think? I doubt he calls himself a life coach. Or not a life coach, but don't you think that's his thing? Coaching people? Yeah. I guess my point coaching. is like, where's that line of like, there's people that find that like attractive. Do you, yeah. do you think that works for some people? Because I feel like. Sure, of course it does. I mean, that's the, that's the amazing thing. There's CrossFit gyms out there that's, that are really irresponsible and suck and their people are still getting fitter. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like, it, it, I'm sure it does work for people. Some people, like, I think that the thing with the Jocko stuff is like, if somebody's literally never heard something before about like maybe doing something, you know, you don't want to do it. That can be a, that is, a, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. That is amazing for them. You know, some of the people that, because of where they are, maybe um, in terms of their in terms of their life experiences, who they've been surrounded by or not surrounded by, um, yeah, it can be a real eye opener for people, and that's where the shock factor I think mm -hmm. does play. I don't really like. I don't really agree with all of that, all of his stuff. Um, you know, and I. It's, it's not for, not, it's not for, it's not for lack of being at high levels mm -hmm. the same levels, if not, um, you know, anyway, I think that what I'm trying to say is different approaches and different styles work for different people. Sure. And so, um, that's where you also, I think as a coach, uh, need to understand like what your identity is as well. And you have to be authentic with it. Mm -hmm. And that's really challenging that is like yeah. super challenging because knowing like hey i want to oh i like you i want to work with you you know can can you can we like just sit down and chat for four hours and you know like not actually get into the weeds or not actually do the work and it's like yeah that's not what i do yeah. i'm not a friend yeah and we've had i mean it, it is interesting the what people need and like i definitely we've experienced that from you know, what is kind of cool about our um, situation is, I mean, it, it hasn't happened a ton because your, your role, your coaching and you do individual coaching much more than I do. Um, but that there's two of us and there's, 
differences between how we coach people. Yeah. So even if you take something like the gym, you know, where my class or your class, there's people in taking my class that are like really gonna, there's people that are gonna get maybe more out of or connect more with what I'm doing versus you. And that's the same with all the coaches in the gym. Um, but it's nice to, you know, and then people say that all the time with, you know, somebody, you could have told someone something a million times and some other coach says it and you're like, oh my God, are you kidding? Like, I, I've told you that for like three years, but it just takes a different personality or whatever that is for that person to hear it differently. Yeah. So all right, that's, we've kind of talked generally speaking about coaching and, yeah. you know, that kind of a bit. Um, what are, do you have any, do you have like a couple do you have a couple kind of like aha moments or valuable things that a coach doesn't have to be me because mm -hmm. I'm also like, you know, your husband. So mm -hmm. that's definitely a, a complicated thing, but some things, some reception of coaching that you can share with people to just kind of have this be a little bit more tangible. Like a specific Not saying experience. like, hey, this is the lesson I learned, so you learn it, but like no, yeah. where a coach has really challenged your beliefs or, or led you to learn about yourself, has provided, has been adaptable, has been flexible, like yeah, just, I mean, just I, some like moments I, of... I mean, I definitely think, so I've talked about recently starting to work with Kyla, who works for StrongFit, mm -hmm. and I think that's been really interesting because it's like a female coach, you know, that's, there's a lot of value, I feel like to that. Um, and I guess I can't like, there's probably some specifics, but without getting like super specific, you know, what's funny about like what you initially tell people, I don't th like what you want. So I initially sought after like nutrition coaching with her. Mm -hmm. We don't really talk about nutrition. Like that's like that's so that would be a waste of an incredible coach to like you know only talk about nutrition. I mean, sure, we know that there's a lot that has to do with nutrition and emotions and all that, but really like what's down and below the surface has for me is like way beyond nutrition. So, there's been a couple times though where um I've had a bunch of questions like, well, what about this? Or what am I supposed to do about that? Or, you know, maybe it's like a workout or a training session where she's given me some guidelines and I don't, it, this was probably more in the initial stages. Um, and I just want to know, like, just tell me what to do with regards to like, I, I don't know, training, maybe it's a training session. Let's talk about like a workout, like, like, okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, you kind of put me on the spot here for an example. I'm trying to, I don't know what the specifics of this one example I'm thinking are, but whatever it was, she told me, she presented me with like, I want you to go out and do this. Okay. Whether it was feel this way in a training session or experience this. And I wrote back wanting, like, I had a number of questions. Well, what about this? Well, what do you think about that? Should I do this? Should I do that? And her answer was, I could tell you all those answers. But like, what good would that be? Yeah. And initially I was like, well, what the fuck? Right. But the reality was why, how would that help me for her to tell me her answers or what she thinks my answers are? Mm -hmm. The value is in me going and figuring that out. And so I definitely connect to that kind of like, just tell me what to do. Right. It's a lot harder. It takes more time. It takes having to make that connection to kind of navigate the way. So I think that's kind of those kinds of things coupled with you talking about coaching and saying like, yeah, it's being careful to not jump down into like what you telling the person what to do, giving them advice. That's kind of been an aha for me in terms of like defining really the, the coach's value. Yeah. I think it's a great example and I think it, it helps people if they're looking for a coach, if they're curious about coaching, if they're whatever, like, to kind of manage their expectations a little bit mm -hmm. if and also like test fucking test a coach mm. honestly interview the, like yeah interview the coach yeah. ask them like yeah you know and or you know do it do it do yeah, it yeah i mean one of the things i think when when we did the strong fit coaches week 
you know, um, I think one of the things, personally speaking for me, coaching people, I make the mistake of taking on a ton of responsibility for that person. Now, sure, you're responsible for your job as a coach. Mm -hmm. But as we've said, it's kind of a 50-50 thing. And for me, I struggle with feeling like, okay, they're not going to do the work. I'm going to do more work now for them because they're not doing the work. And I'm going to take on the role of like, why aren't they having success? Well, maybe it's something I'm doing. And the reality is if that person, and, I, and I, it kind of, when I, when I think Richard was talking about it in terms of like a client or maybe a group, but like, as you said, if they're not doing the work, like what the hell are you here for? Right. Cause I think, but I think that is such a common thing. Like, all right, I hired you. Well, you I hired, hired you. Now, a coach. Now do you fix my life? And yeah. it's like, no, no, no. Like that's not, I think that is a miss. And that's the challenge I'm still struggling with when people want to work with me. That's just something I have to work with as my identity of a coach to be okay with saying like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I need you to do. Now, if they don't do it, Okay, I can't do anything until it's like playing chess. Like until you make a move, like there's nothing I can do. Well, I tell this to people when and just this week or last, um, somebody who wanted to work with me, we had an interview, we talked on the phone or in person, whatever we talked. And they were an athlete, so they kind of mm -hmm. understood the analogy. But it was like you know, as your coach, like I'm not gonna put the uniform on mm -hmm. and play and and play on, and and hop onto the field. Right. And like play the game for you. Like that's not, this isn't like, hey, watch me do this. Right. I'm on the sidelines and there's nothing I can do yeah. to interfere with and contribute to the game that you are playing. And so the, what is the game that you are playing? Mm -hmm. Do you know the opponents? Do you know the, you know, the kind of rules of the game or the purpose or the intention? And they're like, holy shit. Uh, I need to do some thinking. I'm like, and, yes, you and do. And do you want to play? Because if you don't even want to play, right. I'm not... Me pushing you onto the field, right. that's not helping either. Right. And so, like, looking at that as a as a way to be like, okay, what the hell is happening right now? Mm -hmm. Like, what's just, like, what's going on? Because a lot of people, uh, and I think you're right, I think this is where um, Kyla, I said, K I say Kayla for some reason, I think because I'm so used well, to I saying I think K. there's, like, a discrepancy. We'll just have to ask her. Yeah. Is I'm her sorry. name. K2. Go on. Um, you wanted her to put the uniform on and play for you. Sure, it's and so that much is, easier. It's I'd rather so just, much easier. I mean, I don't want to do the work. Right. I'm gonna sit on the sidelines and drink Gatorade. Yeah. Get hyponatremia. Orange slices. See, you weren't. If you if you played, pretzels, you know, oranges. Pretzels. What kind of savage? That's endurance at the sports. It's pretzels. For Anyway. Anyway. Yes. People, if you were, if if you are, um, yeah, if you're looking for a coach or, or like, okay, what is coaching? It's like, yeah, it's. Right. So I think then when we, people who are listening, it's like, okay, well, what kinds of areas people look for coaching in? So I do like to, ref I think it's easy to make the connection with the gym. Enough of the gym. We make a lot of the gym stuff. The gym. Well, I just gym. start with, start with the low West. Oh my Examples. God. You're, out of your, you're fucking out of your mind. So, the gym, the gym and nutrition. Because people think, they're. I, I think this is important because people might think, just as we said, like I sought after nutrition coaching. Sometimes the gateway is something like fitness or nutrition. Sure. So I do think there's some relevance there. So yeah, but what, the problem is that yeah, then your coach that's there, that's not the coach that's going to help you with your actual shit. Yeah. So I think totally one of the right. questions is, it doesn't mean you might need a coach or whatever. But making that distinction of like, why are you even? You can elevate your own experience and figure out kind of what you're looking for by making that, making sure there's a separation there. If, if I, why am I going to the gym? What do I want out of the gym? Okay, maybe I'm uncovering like, okay, so for me, like, what am I looking for in nutrition coaching? Am I really looking to get leaner? Okay. Am I, is it more about like, why do I feel like I need to get leaner? Is there something going on about me being able to accept myself? Mm -hmm. So is that really what I'm looking for? Is like how many nuts to eat every day? Like probably not. The deeper issue there has to do with my acceptance of myself, right? 
like listening to what I'm saying, you would definitely agree. I haven't yes. been listening for the past two minutes. I tuned you out. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, for sure, and, right. and that's so, and that's the thing that now, I think. Fortunately, someone like I think really good coaches in the fitness and nutrition industries at this point understand that it's not just about bicep curls and how many carbohydrates you should eat a day. They they should kind of at this point. I think I think we understand as a as a um, career or that role. Like there's a lot more behind. What's the difference it. between a coach and a trainer? Yeah, I guess a trainer is more about like, I'm going to, if you want to go to it more of like, in my mind, like I'm only purely going to focus on your aesthetics or like your heart rate or making sure that you're, if you just had a cardiac arrest and you're coming back and we want to make sure that your heart keeps functioning, like very much on the physical side. Now they might call themselves a coach, but it's very much geared towards like, can you flex and extend your leg? And like, we just going to keep. Okay. Let's stay within the process. Don't. Don't go outside of CrossFit. CrossFit coaches. Okay, so a lot of people a CrossFit do CrossFit. CrossFit trainer. A cro the, okay, so a CrossFit coach, which I would say who isn't really what we're defining as a coach. Correct. So more we'll call them a trainer. Yeah. They know how to show a movement. This is what this looks like. They know how to start a clock. They're going to maybe cheer for people. Very much surface. It's very much a script and a narrative here's what this looks like this is how you do it is your elbow in the right place and off we go did the movement look the right way good they managed the class they showed the movements they looked at what body parts need to go where and people came and left that's it starts and stops there okay what i think a real a true coach is by our definition is someone who understands one there's a lot more than just like there's a there's an understanding of where's that person coming into class what, what's happened to them in their life in their day what are the emotions coming with this person so what are they looking for in that hour why are they there what are they trying to get out of it understanding how that might impact them receiving coaching what movements they should be doing um, pain they're having, any of their experience related to something beyond just like their physical states, like their knee being operated on or something, having a knee injury. And then also being able to work with that person, if you're just talking about even within the hour, to like provide them then that experience that's going to help them. And, and maybe what I would say as well is it's got to extend beyond the hour because you're building a relationship over time with this person and trying to identify if there's some patterns you're seeing like, okay, at some point, if you're really trying to coach this person and help them and they just come in every day and just crush themselves and like, maybe it does give way to like trying to provide some other education at least to help mm -hmm. that person. Yeah. I think a trainer delivers a prepackaged set of, outcomes. Mm -hmm. This is what you're coming in for. This is what, or this is what I'm going to give you when you come in. Yeah. This is the workout. This is what's going to keep you safe. This is what the book says to do right, which in many ways is right. Mm -hmm. Like that's where it is. It's a bit sterile. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't matter who's coming through that door. Same product. Same thing. And yeah. the trainer, and there are some amazing trainers, some great trainers that can deliver the information like that they, they know their stuff they're well read they're super experienced they they kind of know where people usually struggle with mm -hmm. so that they can kind of dress yeah. around it they know they have the, the deliverable yeah. they know the deliverable very well okay not a fucking coach mm -hmm. if you don't know the human being you're trying to deliver it to because the deliverable is the carrot on the string that just kind of gets you moving. Mm -hmm. And then a real, like, I think a, a proper coach at some point takes the carrot away and the person's like, yeah, right. I'm going to keep moving though. Like I don't need that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. And so a coach, I think, you know, because a lot of it, like every CrossFit gym says they have coaches mm -hmm. and like in many ways, 
they do, and in many ways they don't. Yeah. We, are the, is it a trainer or is it a coach? And it's like, well, how can we, what's the difference? And are we just playing semantics? And it's like, no, I do not believe we are playing semantics. I believe we are making a distinction mm -hmm. so that we can have a better conversation about right. not what we do, but what you want. Right. If you want, just like, hey, I'm going to go here and boom, and that's it. Fine. Yeah. Now, a coach making that, it, it's a human first mindset mm -hmm. or a client first mindset or getting to know the human being more. Yeah. And it's not therapy. It's not tell me all, like, it's not, it's no, not it's a, that. It's involving it's, that person in the process versus, versus the one way. Yeah. I mean, it's the difference between, as you were talking, I was thinking like, okay, the six week challenge, six week women's only challenge. This is the curriculum. You're going to come in. You're going to do this. Are you talking about the one that you're doing? No, I'm talking about like, the that's a thing. A that's a thing. Ago? Yeah, yeah we did there, one of those. We did one of those. Yeah. And yeah. So that's a product. There's a curriculum. We're going to deliver this. You're going to come in. You're going to do movement. And, well, and I would just hold on a second though. We said like, we kind of threw the middle finger up to those guys. Right, said, but like, that's what no, I'm saying. It's not the one do... we did. What I'm saying is out, out there in the world. Yeah, yeah, okay. There okay. Are these you get the template. Yeah, there are yeah. these six-week challenges, or you see it on Facebook. The local gym is like doing like looking yeah, for so twelve maybe women, cartwheeling around, like, looking for twelve women attention. to like lose weight and like try yeah, out. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That compared to like yeah, for example, how we interpreted it, or what I'm doing in the next year, like that is also six weeks. Yeah, as a program, there will be physical activity, but it's very much a two-way street. Those right. people right. coming, they're going to receive a ton of value if they want to do the work. Yeah. But it, and if they just want to come in and take the deliverable, yeah, that's okay. That might be where that person's at. But most people that are joining that are be, are looking for like, okay, I, I'm not just looking at like, can you show me how to do a proper bicep curl? Or like burn some calories. What's the best way to burn calories? Right. So. You know, and for some people, maybe where they're at, I think it also depends on what that coach trainer is looking to do. I think it is challenging at some point, at some point being a trainer, you're probably going to hit a wall with people if you're only going to commit to being a trainer, because we know the software piece beyond the hardware, like the limitations that are going to start to happen with people are not going to be just that's agree. An objective. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to either have to keep just getting new people and it's always just going to be like that initial. And I don't know, maybe that is something for people like, yeah, I just like to get people started. Just get them familiar to yeah, fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. There's tons of value to that. Yeah. But at some point, if you're looking for this like longevity of like working with people and stuff, I think the, the barriers or the things that are going to come up are going to definitely be beyond even, even if it looks like injury. So like, that's, what's interesting to me about like, you know, CrossFit gyms or our gym or, okay. So you take a person, an athlete who comes in a client, a member, maybe someone who's like fired up about doing things RX or mm -hmm. heavy weights. Okay. And that person's like, look, I don't want your like coaching. I just want a trainer. Just tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. Like kind of resists the coaching piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every day they're coming in, they have to go heavy. They have to do the stuff. Yeah. It's all about the physical. I don't want any of the like emotional shit. Like, don't talk to me about that. Okay. Then they get injured. Yeah. Was that just like a physical thing? Like, oh yeah, I just like popped my back because yeah, I just like. Yeah, I went too heavy. Yeah, I don't know. Really. It was like, no, of course not. Like number one, why the fuck do you need to go beyond what you physically, you're like punishing yourself. Why yeah. can't you take a rest day? Why yeah. do you have to do so, but now you're getting into the realm of coach. Right. And so, and so the that's trainer would like, say, great, go to a PT. Here we go. Yeah. Like, it's just about the, physical. like, like, here we go. Like, okay, you want to go, you want to deadlift 515 today and mm -hmm. you've like worked out for the past six weeks. Like, no problem. This is what we need to do. We need to have your back we need to, and it's like, focus on the thing. Yeah. And it's like, really, you want to deadlift at 515 again, or you want to squat like again? And the trainer would be like, okay. That's your goal. That's what you say you want to do. You want to go heavy. You mm -hmm. want to do this. You want to do that. Um, right. They're treating the or symptoms. Or you want to go light. You 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 don't want to go heavy today. Okay. Uh, you don't want to work hard today. Okay. You don't want to like push the sled, get on the bike, mm -hmm. carry the sandbag, do the like actually jump at the top of the burpee. I know it's right. two inches, but you don't want to do that. That's fine. 
the trainer would say like, great, we have a workaround for that. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do that, okay, great. Keep your RPMs at 17 a minute or, you know, or do this or do that. And the coach. Well, right. On that, if you're talking about specific examples. So my workout that was assigned to me on Monday was to do some like pressing, some shoulder work and some lat work. Traditional bodybuilding. Okay. What? You're cutting me off. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Go on. Keep talking. That was a relevant your... example. So. Well, I didn't finish. It. Oh, okay. The trainer is going to say, here's the physical workaround. Here's the alternative to meet you where you're at. Because mm -hmm. a good trainer is still going to meet their clients where they're at. But a coach would come in my opinion, and say, um, like, what are you trying to prove to yourself by always having to be he the person who lifts the heaviest in the gym? Right. Or like... Or why don't or, you want to push yourself? Or like, what are you scared of mm -hmm. by pushing yourself harder? Like, what is, what's holding you back here? Like, what, what's going on here? Way beyond They're the They're like digging the beyond just the surface. Because what, what the, the, what the movement saying. alternative is, and the the numbers and the reps and the schemes for the day are a smoke screen right. for something really going on. Right. And that's the thing. And in the military, it's, it's the difference between concealment and cover. Concealment blocks you from the field of view mm -hmm. without stopping bullets. Mm -hmm. Smoke is in a, like, if there's a sniper, everyone throw smoke. Mm -hmm. That way the dude can't see. That smoke's not stopping a bullet though. Right. Cover is getting behind, you know, a building. To be like, okay, like mm -hmm. we're in the clear now. And so often the smoke screen, there's a lot of smoke mm -hmm. in the gym. There's a lot. And a lot of people aren't ready for, I think, real coaching sure. to come in. And that's, I think, a challenging thing. Your example of, by, of, mm -hmm. of that, that we can transition back to, you've established a coaching relationship right, right. now. Right. So it's like, hey, the game, to go back to that, like, we know the rules of the game, we know the opponents, mm -hmm. we know the, our, our team colors, sure. we know kind of like... There's been play. some learning that's There's had been to happen. some learning. Because yeah. if you just are like, yeah, right on, hey, right. so-and-so, you're going to scale today, why are you, why are you just perpetually uh, um, right. um, keeping you yourself down? Rapport. Like, like, yeah. like, hold on, right. like, you know, don't, you, you can't just right. go in there and, you know, be, be, uh, goodwill hunting in them or whatever yeah you have to build that up and that is the patience and the time and i think that is one of the things like and it's two-way it's a two-way thing sure yeah um yeah and it doesn't i think that's also not i do want to go back to my example but that's where the ego comes in as well from a coach like yeah it's not your job to just like oh i'm identifying that i think that that person obviously there there's a smoke screen there with like they can't back off like they have to always prove themselves in the right. gym and I'm going to go and I'm going to tell them that. Yeah. Like, but that's, that's like about me. That's well, about me as the sure. coach wanting to show that person. And that's not going to go well at all. Like that's not like that has to be over time coming to a place where now you can maybe in the appropriate way, like have that person answer that question for themselves. And that's one of the things with the coaching, my experience, yeah. like with you, with Kyla, like there's questions and it's not, necessarily you can have some mind no, it's, right. it's not necessarily like for me to answer to her or sure. to you no it's like hey here's a question for you and it does help people to know like i don't need you to tell me like hey at that point like what's it about today that you feel like you need to rx or need to use this barbell today like don't need to answer it to me like just just like think about that that's all like i just want you to stop and think about it and they might still proceed with that but yeah. they've you're starting to develop that so that being said, on Monday, the work... that could be really preachy. That could be yeah. really yeah. preachy. So I think it's and like, just you being need to careful earn with that. that. That's that is a privilege, and I mean this when I work with people, like, and I tell them, and they'll say nice things. I'll be like, no, it is a privilege and an honor to be able to work in this way. Sure. And that is something that, as a coach, like, don't you fucking dare think that you're just gonna give it. Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 no. You need to respect that relationship. Mm -hmm. And that is a real privilege and it is an incredible honor to say, hey, coach, can you help me? Yeah. And it is like, the, you know, so. Yeah. So, so that I, time to develop that. But yes, ultimately, like um, 
building that that foundation first so on Monday this isn't really that but kind of back to more like not just having it not just but challenging people at the point where then you can challenge them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for sure. That's what it is. For so, sure. So but Monday, what I'm saying is you're not going to go up and be like, hey, no. what are you trying to, why can't you accept yourself? What is it about? Sure. Like of you course, can't go, yeah. you're not going level friggin' 90. Yeah. And I mean right more like also challenging them with like, um, like what I'm trying to say this example on Monday, my workout was not something I really was particularly excited about doing. And I shared that with Kyla, like, not really feeling it. Yeah. Don't really feel like doing this. And there's been times where it's like, okay, let's, what do you feel like? What do we want to do? What would help you? But on Monday it was like, good. Like then that's at this point, like that's kind of like all the reason for you to do it. And that made sense to me. And I was like, yep. All right. That doesn't mean that that's every day. And I think right. that's also the fine line of like dosing your clients appropriately, having yeah. that experience. Um, so, right. you know, and I there's think there's no way a template can do that. Sure. How, because... are, how is that? And the template, what's crazy about that too, is like the human terrain and like, as you call it, and like, that's something, you know, I've definitely learned a lot from my experience, like watching you coach and just talking about it. But like, you have to like really observe people for a long time. Like you can't really just make any like we have the same people that we coach a lot, like especially the 9 a.m. crew. Sure, yeah. And like, it takes a long time to kind of understand, like to read people, to understand like where they're at, to know what's like their usual, to know when they're like not yeah. maybe the norm. Like, hey, are you like all right today? Like you feel okay? Right. Like, no, actually like I don't. Like, all right, well let's like back off a little bit. But like that in itself, you have to be looking for those things. You have to want to get to know people. If you don't want to like, Hey, I don't care. I don't want to like, I don't, there's that line. Like, I don't want to know all this stuff. I'm just here to train you. Yeah. You won't see anything. No, cause you're not. And you won't know when that person feels good, feels bad. Something sure. happened in their life. So, right. you know, um, yeah. I think that's one that's of the things where people say like, well, yeah, it's, I do think that with CrossFit gyms, the person might not be, um, might not understand all the elements of coaching, mm -hmm. but I think generally speaking, people get into CrossFit coaching because they actually really do care about people. hundred percent. So people feel that. Yeah. And that's where that, like, I love my gym comes from. Like they feel cared about. They feel like that person knows when they come in and something is off yeah. and that goes well, well beyond someone being able to talk about triple extension. You know, that's also why I'm not, you know, that's also why like if, somebody you know it's like hey we we have coaches we have trainers like what's mm -hmm. the difference what's the deal it's like man there's like there's a bit of an over there's certainly yeah. some overlap there and so you know yeah your your normal person at the or, or your gym that doesn't really understand any of this mm -hmm. um and whatever you know like yep that's like for example soul cycle they are not coaches mm -hmm. sorry they're not like they're performing and you're kind of on stage with them a little bit. Well, what's interesting about that, I think in my experience, there's people that have the potential to, that have that in them, but that platform will not allow for it. So for them to- That's a good point. You know I, I don't mean? need to sound judgmental. Yeah, because the human being can be a phenomenal coach. The business of SoulCycle is sure. not a coaching- You can't even see people. Right. It's dark. So how do you have, you have no, it, there is no interaction. That's right. the problem with that. So that environment is a one way. I'm standing here. I'm, I can't see you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to give you stuff, but I don't see anything coming back. There's no interaction. So by definition of kind of what we're saying, coaching is right. it's not right. that. Um, now I think that there's definitely people that have that ability or they could be a good coach, but that platform, that expression of it isn't possible. Yeah. yeah. And I think just to sum it, like to wrap it up, um, just some of the things that we've like, and we work on. So there's the education and then the empowerment is to have the client come up with their empowering themselves, allowing empowering that person to, yeah. yeah, not, um, telling or, or, or dictating. Right. And then the engaged piece, like that's a, obviously been a huge mm -hmm. word between years forever. Um, but it's like, 
yeah, wanting to be an active participant sure. in your life. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. And to your point earlier, like the excuse is the movement. The excuse is the nutrition. The excuse mm-hmm. is being and it's, a better, and it's okay you know, that people might initially that might be like the thing that initially is yeah. What's obvious to someone, like I'm seeking out, they, it's not like they know, and I'm not going to tell that person, I'm going to say it's about nutrition, but it's really about this. It just, that might be the catalyst, the thing that's There's like, common ground. Yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, I, I, I am struggling to like get into a good fitness regime or lose some weight. And then hopefully finding someone that can like hear that, but also work to resolve what's beneath that, not yeah. just that. Because it's also tough to be like, okay, objective. where do I start with? And that's a big thing. And that's, yeah. maybe we do another podcast on that. Where do you start if you're right. looking for coaching? That could be a great one. Um, but yeah, there's there's certainly a lot there. So that's kind of our shtick, our spiel, our approach. I keep yawning today. It's my co-host. <laughs> um, so if you are interested in coaching, if you do want to, to work with us, send us a message. Um, we have different types. There's the practice, which um, I'm going to be making some updates to. But I work with people individually in that regard. I do private experiences, one-on-one experiences. You do one-on-one coaching. Um, yeah, we do. We do. We do quite yeah. a bit with that because, as you can see, it's not just a. Uh, we coach people to, and then insert the marketing line right. that you know no. I throw up in my mouth every time here. So that's what we do. Um, the seminar, between your seminar, February 8th, there's 11 spots left. So if you actually want to do the work, sign up for it. And uh, I, some people might have something going on. You probably don't. This is four months from now. So stop, you know, your calendar's clear. Uh, but and I have questions on group. that, questions on that, send them. You're starting your women's group in January. Yep which is cool. All this stuff is on, generally Somewhere. speaking, Instagram. Yep. At Kariana Anthes. Mm-hmm. K-A-R-I-A-N-N-E. A-N-T-H-E-S. We should get you a new handle. K- at Kayanima. I can change it. No, no, no. At no. any time you can change it. Kayanima. Um... At yeah, the landing, basically at between just the years, at CF find Motel, us somewhere if you have stuff. any questions. And sure. From there. So those are the those are the places to go. Other than that, this was a fun chat. Yeah. It's a passion of ours, um, and we like chatting about it. So if there's questions, if there's um, things you want to hear us chat or dig into or concepts maybe expand upon a little bit more, uh, happy yeah, to do that to and, and really good ask, asking for that kind of a feedback thing. So that's that. Yeah. Chat next week.